2.0 Workbench. My name is John Brunswick and today we're going to be taking a look at Web Center Patch Set 3 and some new functionality called Navigation Models. Navigation Models are going to allow us to deliver user interfaces with menuing built on pure cascading style sheets. So we're going to take a Web Center Spaces or Portal template, remove the default navigation and put in our own. The great thing here is it's based on unordered lists. And this is going to allow us to use web design practices that you're probably already doing today, but you get all the integration capability found in the Web Center platform. So grab a cup of coffee, open the IDE, let's get coding. In order to build our example using the new navigation, we're going to use a vanilla Web Center Spaces environment and go ahead and create a space in which we can deploy the components to make our unordered list navigation. One of the key things to understand with there are three basic constructs that are going to help us to build out this system. There's a new area within Web Center Spaces PS3 where we have a series of items in something called the resources section. We have navigation models. You can see something there on the left under structure called navigations. The concept of page templates. Page templates are going to hold the actual physical structure of div tags and other elements that you would traditionally think of in an HTML page. And lastly, under the look and layout area, skins, which are um, used to build together the cascading style sheets that are going to get deployed with a particular space. So for our example, we're going to build out a brand new space that we can use to get a baseline on the user interface. And let's go ahead and call this, let's call this team project. So this is going to be a project that I'm going to do with some other people in my organization or potentially a business partner. And I'm going to want to set it up to use some services so we can very quickly get together and work where we already have discussions, document sharing, tagging, and other capabilities available. So we've arrived at our team project area, and you'll notice on the left-hand side there are a series of navigation items. Nice, clean navigation out of the box, something that you would primarily think of as being leveraged within an intranet type of experience. So toward the top of this page, there are some navigation links in the upper right-hand corner that are kind of administrative and specific to my user, and right under that blue section, that's where we're going to put our new unordered list nav. So everything you see on the page right now is being driven by ADF technologies. And the great part here is that we can use, again, our standard kind of web design and development directly within this system. Let's head back to administration, and we're going to take a closer look at the navigation model that's actually driving this space. When we go into the navigations area, Let's actually copy an existing navigation to take a look at it. What's really nice in this administrative interface, everything that we're doing here, we can do within JDeveloper with the resources. So the things that we're looking at right now are capable of being imported and exported within the system using the IDE or using the browser as we're currently using. So we're going to take a look at it from a kind of business view mode, not a code mode. And you'll notice this navigation is giving us a series of links and objects that are going to be bound to the menu structure within our project area. The nice part here, we can add all sorts of different elements into the navigation, whether it's an application, content items, links, a very broad range of items can be added here. Additionally, if we added a link, let's just do a quick sample here. Actually, let's do this. You'll notice that we also have an opportunity to, um, to work with the link moving it up and down within the list. And if, if we can, we can also indent items in the list. And you'll, you'll see that later when we bring everything together for our final example. That'll give us the ability to do nested flyouts within our menuing and to create uh, navigations that get as simple or as complex as we want.
So that's the navigation section. The next thing we're going to take a look at are the page templates. Now the page templates, there uh, are a series of stock ones that ship out of the box. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a Web Center Spaces side navigation and make our own copy. And we're going to go ahead and call this the project sample space web center spaces side navigation. Now again, it just as with the other resources, we have an ability to actually edit and work with them in the browser interface, or we can go ahead and take them into an IDE. For our purposes today, we want to do some things that are quick and effective and pragmatic that might not be production ready, but I want to help to convey a concept. So we're actually going to cut and paste this directly from the web UI into a notepad. And we're going to work with it here and actually add in the elements that we need to make our page completely dynamic and do it in a way, again, where we're using standard um, CSS-based technologies. So we've pulled down the template, and if you're familiar with ADF, JSF, or just even HTML, a lot of this looks very familiar. What we're going to do, we're going to add in some elements to make it dynamic and very much um, aesthetically appealing without really having to get super technical. So the first thing that we want to do, we actually want to add some capabilities technically to our page around JavaScript uh, tag libraries. And so we're going to make sure that those get brought into this particular page and become usable. That's the first thing we're going to do. The second thing that we'll be doing, this is actually the code that powers the CSS-based navigation. So let's just quickly step through it. You'll notice at the top we have a comment, below it we have a div tag, and then just below the div tag is where we start getting into the new elements that are part of patch set 3. We have an object that actually works us work with a series of um, different approaches to getting information from our navigation models. And the great thing here, what we're doing, what I've highlighted, we're taking the default navigation and assigning it to a nav nodes variable using the um, Java tag libraries. And that's what we're doing here with the set variable. So the great thing here is this is something that's, that's very, very standard, whether you're using scripting languages or Java-based technology, this is fairly straightforward. What then happens, we begin to iterate using that object. So you'll start to see in line four the first unordered list item with the ID of nav, and just below that there's a for each statement that is executed against the navigation nodes that were pulled from the default model that's been assigned to the space. Underneath it, what happens when it reaches a node, it's actually going to go ahead and render a hyperlink to that node. And this is plain old HTML that we're looking at right now. And if there's a child in the navigation to that node, it's going to go ahead and make sure that it renders that as well. So you can see we've got some nested loops and we go three deep in order to produce this navigation. So let's go ahead and add this to the page that we pulled in and we are going to add it just below the decorative box here. And so if we look, let's look back at the space for just a moment. And you'll notice that in our team project, this uh, blue area at the top, that is essentially the decorative box area. And we want our navigation to fall just below that. So let's go back to our code. <clears throat> And the final component that we're going to add is some cascading style sheet code. Now, in a real implementation, we're going to want to go ahead and add this in to the skin area. Just for the sake of brevity, I'm going to add it directly into our page template. One thing that I want to point out, the code that we have here is actually from Nick Law's Web Designer Wall, which is a great site with a lot of tutorials, a lot of things around cascading style sheets version 3. And I took it and modified it a little bit for the purposes of this demonstration. So we're going to go ahead and grab that cascading style sheet code. And let's put it right below the XML content node. So we've got this entire page now. I'm going to go ahead and 
I have a complete sample set up that is identical to the code that we cut and pasted. And we're going to go back into our resource manager. And let's go ahead to our project sample side navigation. We're going to go ahead and edit the source directly in the browser here. Let's paste in our new code and hit OK. And when we come back to the page here, if we refresh, it's actually going to stay exactly the same. The reason is we have not assigned the new template. So after we create the template, we've got to go into the team project and make sure that we assign it as the page template. So here we go. Here's our new page template. Let's go ahead and hit apply. And now if we go back to the team project window and hit refresh, you'll notice that we get entirely new navigation. Now, one thing that's really important to point out even though there are a series of gradients here in different colors and it looks like we've added quite a bit, this is being done exclusively through Cascading Style Sheets and using Cascading Style Sheets 3, we're not using any images to drive this. Really neat. Now, what you'll also notice, we're seeing the ability to have parent and child style navigation and it's working seamlessly directly within our system. So if we go to the documents area, if we hop into the discussions area, everything is just working. Now, this navigation is fairly straightforward, so let's take it um, kind of up a level and do a bit of nesting with the navigation items. So before I started the tutorial, I created a second navigational model that does a little bit of nesting. Let's go ahead and select our navigation model and hit apply. Okay. And if we go back to the home page of our site, you'll notice that some items are removed now, but what you'll also notice is under discussions, we are going two levels deep. So again, this is all being done purely through cascading style sheets and it's using the Web Center navigational model object iterating through and going ahead and giving us the ability to do literally anything we want with the user interface that we're seeing all over on uh, .com sites, on maybe some online banking sites, whatever your business requirements are, this is going to be able to meet them. So with this posting, I'm providing the sample code for all the different areas used. Again, I want to stress that this is definitely sample code. If you're putting it in production, go through it. Make sure that it makes sense for your deployment. In addition, if you're looking for additional Web Center slash ADF tips and tricks, feel free to visit the Fusion blog. That's blogs.oracle.com forward slash Fusion ECM or find me at johnbrunswick.com.